Hey, what's going on YouTube? Hope everyone's having an excellent day. Let's get to the videos. Humans were never meant to see. Bro. If I'm not mistaken, this isn't Italy thinking. I showed the sea pig already. I still think it's very fascinating that we keep finding things deep underwater. What? Bro, and nigga just set himself on fire in front of the courthouse, bro. Bro exposed everything. The thing about all of this is that right before he set himself on fire, he threw papers in the air that would expose the government. Look at this one, bro. Has moved massive amounts of stolen crypto through Tesla stock when he co-founded PayPal. They were trying to make crypto, but the theft tech wasn't there yet. Now, I don't know how much of this stuff is real, but the one specific thing that he talked about really concerned me. I don't know everybody knows what Bitcoin is, right? Within those documents, he talked about how cryptocurrency was going to crash significantly. How crypto is just a big Ponzi scheme. That a bunch of billionaires was going to wipe out everything. And nobody was going to know what happened. And it kind of makes a lot of sense because all these crypto coins are at some sort of high right now. Or at least getting there. And if all these billionaires were to do some sort of fishy activity with Bitcoin... Nobody would know who it was, bro. But I don't know. A lot of the stuff that he was talking about makes me feel like a lot of it was true because why would a man set himself on fire, bro? This man set himself on fire to get this information out. So, I mean, it got to be some truth. So it got to be. It got to be. But let me know what you guys think. He probably was mentally ill. The things he wrote about could be true. And when it comes to crypto, they definitely can track it. If you ever watch CoffeeZilla, he shows that in great detail. That's how he's able to catch scammers and prove that scammers are doing shady stuff for crypto. Crypto is like that because it's not really regulated well. So if you want to make more money and you're rich already, it makes sense to put millions into crypto. Shit's getting weird. Part infinity. Picture this. A liquid that's not just any liquid, but a substance designed by the brilliant minds at Harvard. A substance so advanced, it's stretching the boundaries of what we thought possible. This isn't a mere concoction, it's a programmable liquid, a revolution in technology that's here to change the way we perceive matter. Imagine a liquid that you can program to change its properties at will. A substance with tunable springiness, adjustable optical properties, and variable viscosity. A liquid that can shift between behaving like a Newtonian fluid, flowing like water, and a non-Newtonian fluid resisting flow. This liquid is a matrix of elastomer spheres, tiny orbs that range from 50 to 500 microns across. They populate the liquid and give it its extraordinary properties. This is a substance that bends at the will of technology, a testament to the leaps and strides we're making in the scientific world. This isn't a plot from a science fiction movie, but a reality we are stepping into. Welcome to the era of programmable liquids. So. What exactly is this programmable liquid? Flubber? Harvard just created Flubber? <laughs> I completely forgot about Flubber. I feel like this would be useful for humans, but it could backfire very easily. Symbolism will be their downfall. Or is it just art? And let me be the first to tell you, it's all connected. I mean, if you know, you know. But first, let's go back to that video of Ellen DeGenerate. When the camera turns, you can see the inside of her house. Now, see that picture right there? Well, if you pause it and look it up, it says evil thoughts with revenge right next to it. Here's another picture of Ellen in her house. And this is the picture behind her. Now, the thing I'm curious about is the letters on top of the picture. These look oddly similar to the letters Marina Abramovich writes out when she does spirit cooking. Remember the beginning of the video? It's all connected. And that person that was in all red is Lady Gaga. And she 
went to Marina Abramovich many times for teaching. But let's continue. This is another picture of Ellen in her home. She's cutting her mother's hair, but what is that picture above her head? I told you about Sandra Bullock. I told you about Julia Roberts. Now I'm going to tell you about another. This man right here with a pig. <laughs> That's a man. That's a man, people. That's the one that held up the head, Trump's head, and he's allowed to do it. But you try it with Biden and see what happens to your post. Truth in plain sight. Well, world, this is it. You know, I always thought you'd die before me. Now as I prepare my soul for an eternity of fire and poking. Yeah, let's chat more splat, pal. Uh Hey, Mr. S, I didn't know you budgied. I want to live. No, no, you're too heavy. It's a glandular problem. There is no escape from the fortress of the moles. <laughs> Top secret CIA weather control division, Dick speaking. I need pizza store. Oh, it's you, Stan. What kind of favor? I'm out at Channel 3, and you two are back in. Thanks to us. What do you mean, thanks to you? We did all of this. Francine got you on the air, and I have used my CIA powers to make that superstore. You made this store? Lives were destroyed. But Greg's life was fixed. Now you've got a new work partner and a new life partner. Now kiss, you two lovebirds, and put some mustard on it. Aren't you straight? Yes, but I'm terrified of these people. They can control the weather. Why is that jet flying so close to our house? At last, those planes are flying where they belong. That's right. Over the homes of poor people. Kind of sad, but a lot of stuff already been proven to happen. But the Simpsons, as usual, always make jokes and predict these things beforehand. Which conspiracy theory is so believable that it might be true? PETA is controlled opposition run by the meat industry designed to make animal rights activists look bad. 2. Michael Jordan's first retirement was actually a suspension by the NBA because of his gambling. 3. The real reason Apple removed the headphone jack was to try to remove Square Pay Systems as a competitor for Apple Pay. 4. Dyson purposefully made the cable shorter over time just before announcing the cordless version. My DC Wo 1 had a 12 meter cord. My DC 14 has a 6.5 meter cord. They purposefully made the flex shorter to be an inconvenience and make people want the cordless version. 5. Women's pants pockets are significantly smaller than men's pants pockets to encourage us to buy handbags and purses. 6. Apple started the meme about AirPods being expensive as a marketing ploy. 7. The government experiments on the mentally insane because no one will believe someone with that kind of medical history. 8. That big bread paid toaster manufacturers to put in a setting that is too high so that people would burn their toast meaning that they sell more bread. 9. The ballistic missile threat that was sent to Hawaiian cell phones saying, seek shelter, this is not a drill, that was later deemed a mistake, was a real missile that was intercepted before impact. 10. The Vatican holds horrible dark secrets and many answers to existential questions. And that Area 51 is a publicity stunt by the government to hide the real testing facility. 11. YouTube in a mobile browser is so shitty so they can force you to use the app and not use an ad blocker. 12. Long John Silvers is some kind of money laundering scheme on the basis that they have been open for as long as I can remember, but I have also literally never seen a busy Long John's. Toxic delusion 
that I ironically entertain? Perhaps. 13. The value of expensive art is just as a pseudo-currency for rich people to subtly buy drugs or other illicit things. I pretty much agree with everything I just heard. Everything that video just said seemed to be spot on when it comes to the conspiracy theory. They're not big ones, but they all make sense. The AirPods that you're wearing right now while you're watching this video. Did you know Apple made this patent for the AirPods? And if this is going on right now, I can only imagine what else they got cooking for the customers. Run that video, comment below. Share this with someone you love, care, and respect. Are you still going to wear your AirPods? Oh, yeah. And this is for educational purposes only. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office recently published an application from Apple regarding an advanced sys sensor system. And it's in the AirPods. So whenever you apparently buy a new pair of AirPods, they have the capability of sending brain signals that you're thinking about. I know y'all talking about, hold on, wait a minute. So anything your little nasty brain is picking up, if you're Googling how to unalive somebody, if you got some really messed up thoughts, if you even thinking about doing it, they able to pick it up on these AirPods. Now let me explain to you how it works. I said, damn, this is better than a CAT scan. Okay? So apparently Patton explains that traditionally brain activity is monitored with electrodes from the scalp. But placing them inside or around the ear can offer advantages like less movement of the device and less visibility compared to systems requiring visible scalp. Now, this also is sensed the types of bio signals that could be measured include, but not limited to, electrosympathy. You see how they be trying to put these words, they be trying to make up new words and stuff so we don't go look it up, but they trying to tell you whatever it is that's electro that's coming from your brain into these AirPods, they can see it and they can hear it. Oh, my graphy and electro cooler graphy, whatever it is, okay? It sends bio signals back to their servers. You know if it's sending things back to their servers, I wonder what their servers can upload through your ears. Into your brain. I have. They've been doing it with radio and television for years. You get on the radio is a song that you don't like. They keep playing it and playing it and playing it. And you turn it off. Every time you turn it on, they playing it. Before you know you in the shower, reciting that sorry ass song. Man, let me tell you how bad it was. Okay, I was born on a flight. And I was in the, the Delta, the jet bridge. And I saw this lady with this cute, colorful dress on. You know I'm from Florida. I like the pink flamingo colors and all that stuff. She looked like a big, wide flamingo. It was a cute dress. I was like, dang, that's a real cute dress. I don't think it was made here. The next day, I'm laying in my bed. Why the dress come across my Instagram? Now, this is way beyond listening. This is seeing. How were they able to see what I saw in front of me, get a digital picture, and have that same that dress come across for 1999. They claim that the AI is so good that it can predict what you want to see in ads, but I always thought that was BS. They are definitely listening. The AirPods thing is very concerning. <laughs> Maybe I should get rid of my Apple products now, right? Especially the AirPods. Especially the last one about art. Curious fireball lights up the Las Vegas night sky, and it's all caught on a cop's body cam. Moments later, 16-year-old Angel Kenmore frantically calls 911, telling the operator that something from out of this world was in his backyard. It has big eyes and looking at us, and it's still there. So there's two people or two subjects that are in your backyard? Correct, and they're very large. Nine feet, ten foot. They look like aliens to us. Big eyes, they have big eyes, and they're not human. They're 100% they're not human. In this world exclusive, Angel and his family are telling only Inside Edition what happened that night? But you're outside, yeah. you're working on a truck, yeah. and then you hear, you see a light, and then you hear a noise. Yep. So, so I mean, you, you start looking off in the distance. Yeah, from here, like I just saw, you know, the light falling right here. Angel says he saw two creatures and was paralyzed with fear. When cops arrived, they didn't know what to make of this bizarre situation and approached the house with caution. I have butterflies, bro. And these people say there's aliens in their backyard. Angel told them the same story he's now telling Inside Edition. Did you see it? Yeah, me and him signed. Dad Bobby, Mom Concha, and brother Joshua 
backed up Angel's claims, saying they saw the same creatures. It was like a big creature. A big creature? Yeah, like a long time feet tall. Cops took the call seriously and left these parting words with Angel and his family. If those nine foot beings come back, don't call us, all right? Deal with it yourself. <laughs> They began canvassing the neighborhood. This might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? As the story gathered worldwide attention, check out what was spotted over the skies of Las Vegas. Nothing was heard from the Kenmore family until now. Do you believe that these creatures were human? They were not human. What color were they? Like green, gray. We asked them to draw what they saw. To the best of your ability, draw what you recall. Don't look at each other, just focus on your own pad and try from your memory to draw a picture of the creature that you saw. This is what you drew mm -hmm. and describe this. What is this? And what, what are these? These are, they look like, like ears, but they have like, like little bit like antenna, like light. And large eyes? Large eyes, a lot of feet. No nose? No, no nose, no. Describe this if you can. You know, this is what I saw. The light was beside him. Yeah. I've tried to make the skin color, the skin tone it had. One of the legs, they look bent. Four months since that mysterious night, the Kenmore say they are still haunted by whatever was lurking in their backyard. There's actually been an update to this situation. The guy is still saying the exact same story. And you can tell in the newest video that he was really like afraid that day. He also was saying it wasn't an alien. He think it was a demon. That's what made me uh, want to go find this video. I swear I heard about something like this before. As soon as Julio arrives at the stop sign, the red Chrysler can be seen pulling up right in front of him and blocking his path. So, uh, hit Given the circumstances, Julio reacted much quicker than most people would. As soon as he saw someone about to get out of the red car, he put the car in reverse and skillfully backed away. Unfortunately for him, the driver of the red car refused to give up so easily and continued to follow closely. At one point during the chase, the attackers throw an unidentified object at Julio's car in an effort to get him to stop. This is when he decides to call 911 for help. probably dispatching units as they spoke, it would have probably taken the officers at least a few minutes to arrive, which would have been extremely dangerous for Julio. Luckily, as he's on the phone with the dispatcher, he spots a cop car stopped at a traffic light and pleads for help. They're right behind me. I, I don't know what the hell is going on. Oh, there's a cop right next to me. This guy right behind me. Hold on. Hey, this guy right behind me. Are you still there? Holy 
cops are going after him. Did the officer the No, he just he just went on a high speed car chase. Holy cow! Okay, hang on with me. Hang on. I'm with the. I just saw the police officer right now. I'm not sure what the hell just happened. Man. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm with the 911 operator right now. Listen, I don't know what happened. I pulled out. I was gonna go get some food right there on Central, and then all of a sudden this car just pulled up right in front of me. I thought they were gonna carjack me or something, man. And they started to get out. I put it in reverse, and I just got the hell up out of there and went down towards San Pedro and Central. Did you, did you get a free number? Or was man, I was. Hell that's okay. That's fine. I, I, said, I, I got it on camera, though, bro. You had it on camera? Yeah. Unfortunately, the suspect managed to get away from the officer during the high-speed chase, and it was never confirmed what his intentions were that night. But judging by his behavior, it's more than likely that this was an attempted carjacking. Had the officer not been at the right place at the right time, Julio would have had to stop at the red light alone, or he would have been at the mercy of the attacker. Because neither the cop nor Julio could get the red Chrysler's license plate, the Albuquerque Police Department couldn't pursue the matter any further, meaning that the suspects probably continued preying on other victims on the road. That was terrifying. I'm glad this person was able to get help from the police officers. This footage was captured on a random road on the outskirts of Warsaw, Poland on March 30th, 2014. Inside the vehicle is a man and his daughter. The road is pretty poorly lit, and even with headlights on, the driver probably can't see more than 20 or 30 feet in front of him. A few seconds into the video, a car traveling in the opposite direction flashes its headlights at the driver in what appears to be a warning. Unfortunately, the driver doesn't have enough time to react, and this is where things take a pretty dark turn. After swerving to avoid the man standing in the middle of the road, the driver attempts to correct the vehicle's path. However, this is much easier said than done in the heat of the moment. Unable to control the car, the father and daughter fly off the road and come to a rest in a ditch. Although it appears that the man had his back turned to the car at the moment of the incident, there's still no reason to be standing in the middle of a pitch black road while there are cars passing by. Given the man's irrational behavior, it's possible that he was either under the influence of something or attempting to take his own life. But because the man immediately fled the scene, his true intentions that night are anyone's guess. According to the driver, he and his daughter both sustained minor injuries, and the police were never able to find the mysterious man. In 2018, Lauren and Brian Swenson were in the process of opening a CrossFit gym in Nairobi, Kenya with two local trainers. One day, the Utah couple were on their way to do some filming with their trainers to promote their gym, when they suddenly came across the traffic jam on the main road. Soon after taking a detour on a dirt road, the Swensons and the trainers passed two officers on foot with weapons who gestured for the couple to give them a ride. For reasons they didn't disclose, they chose not to pick up the officers and continued driving until they came across a white public transport vehicle stopped in the middle of the road. Although the couple didn't notice at the time, the driver of the white van tried to warn them with his headlights, but they missed the signal, and this is where things get disturbing. Yeah. Drive. 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 Just as they pass the van, three men armed with machetes appear from behind the vehicle and charge at the Swenson's car. Reacting quickly to the situation, the driver immediately shifts the vehicle into reverse to gain some distance. As the One thing about when you go to other countries, especially places like this, I think this is Kenya, they communicate very well with each other, like the criminals. But sometimes they'll know that Americans or tourists are coming and they'll rob them. For uh, obvious reasons. Then get closer, one of the trainers instructs Brian to drive forward, and as he does, one of the attackers tries to reach through the window with his machete. In a Facebook post she shared after the incident, Lauren mentioned that when they first saw the bandits, Brian's window was only partially up, and that he sped back in reverse to buy some time to roll it up. When the bandits attacked the car, the window was cracked a couple of inches, but luckily it wasn't enough for the machete to fit through. As Brian speeds away on the dirt road, one of the trainers mentions that he could see cops arriving at the scene. <laughs> The crazy thing is, imagine if they would have just picked up the cops. They might have been able to avoid that terrible situation they were in. But obviously, if you're driving and you're a foreigner, you're not going to probably pick up cops randomly. It just doesn't make sense, so I can see why they didn't do it. Alarmingly, a shot could be heard behind the vehicle, presumably from the confrontation between the cops and the men with machetes. In her Facebook post, Lauren mentioned that if she had picked up the officers, or even let them ride on the side rails as they went up the road, they would have likely opened fire on the bandits. Luckily, the Swensons and the trainers were able to ride away safely, but it was not confirmed if anyone was hurt after the encounter. 
In May of 2021, a series of storms swept through West Virginia, bringing winds as strong as 70 miles per hour to the region. On May 26th, a woman named Amber Revis was driving down Route 51 in Jefferson County when power lines started falling across the road. This is what her dash cam captured. With a swift maneuver, Amber manages to swerve off the road just in time to avoid the impact of the power lines. She later uploaded the video to Facebook and thanked the people who stopped to help her. These situations are incredibly dangerous for more than one reason. In addition to the threat of being crushed under the weight of the falling power line, electrocution is also a significant risk. If a live power line makes direct contact with a car or even comes close to it, the driver can be fatally electrocuted. The power line could also potentially ignite the car's fuel, leading to a fire or explosion. Luckily, the wires didn't come close enough to Amber's car to do any damage, and she was able to drive away unharmed. This clip was captured in Chile on February 26, 2022, and later uploaded to Reddit. In the footage that was captured by the driver's dash cam, the white car in front can be seen braking more than is necessary and moving a little suspiciously down the road that leads up to a tunnel. The driver with the dash cam keeps his distance as the white car comes to a complete stop, and this is where things get interesting. trust anybody when people stop like that you already know they're trying to jack you why else would they be stopping like that that is crazy as soon as the white car stops at least four suspects jump out and start running towards the driver's car in what we can assume to be a carjacking attempt having sensed that something was wrong from the start the driver reacts in a split second and accelerates quickly the attackers have just enough time to move out of the way as the driver rams into the white car and takes off the door as he speeds away one thing that caught many viewers' attention is the fact that the man remains incredibly calm throughout the attempted carjacking. His awareness of the situation and quick thinking ultimately kept him out of harm's way, and based on his behavior, it's very likely that this isn't the first time something like this happened to him. This seems to be echoed by the description that was uploaded to Reddit by the user who posted the video. The caption read, To give more context, this happened in Chile. I wasn't driving, but I often use that route. Here, this type of carjacking has become so common that it's a risk to get out of the car after 10pm, and all drivers have learned to keep their distance from the front cars on exits. There's not a lot of info. Exposed for a Diddy freak off because Kevin Hart is getting exposed as Diddy's accomplice during these parties and freak offs. The streets have been buzzing these past couple of days as more and more people associated with Diddy are getting exposed for enabling and covering up for him. And it looks like Mr. Kevin Hart is next on the list. Now, some newly leaked footage of Diddy's parties clearly shows that Kevin was an active participant and allegedly knew all about Diddy's mistreatment of young boys, including Usher. Word on the streets is that Kevin is now panicking over this because he now knows that he might be in a lot of trouble with the feds as well. And he is doing everything to separate himself from Diddy and act like he was never there. But the internet never forgets. So is Kevin Hart about to get swept up by Diddy's RICO charges? Let's break it all the way down. Okay, y'all, so it's looking like Diddy is not the only one who was going down in this current hot mess that he found himself in because some of his closest friends and allies are allegedly going down with them. At this point, y'all probably already know that the feds are bringing up Diddy and his co-conspirators up on RICO charges, and this has sent everybody who's ever been associated with Diddy into a state of major panics, because everybody knows that RICO charges are no joke. But now since we found out about this, fans have been throwing out names left and right, speculating about who is going down next after Diddy. And many names have been thrown out, including Jay-Z, Young Miami, Cuba Gooding Jr., and many other names. But one name that people seem to have forgotten about is Kevin Hart. But it looks like it might be game over for him too because of a video of him at one of Diddy's parties just resurfaced and went viral. And y'all, when I tell you that it's insane, y'all probably already know all about the things that go down at Diddy's parties. So whenever someone talks about Diddy's parties, you can bet your last dollar that it's going to be something messy. Because not only was Kevin a guest at these parties, but the new videos revealed that he also helped Diddy plan and host the parties. Kevin, come here, no homo. We're going to have a contest. You know we're going to have a contest? We're going to get our breath first because your breath is stinking sometimes. 
And we're going to go back and forth. <laughs> you know, first of all, make, make sure my mic is on. Before before I even get into to trash and Diddy, you know, I'm going to acknowledge him on a special day. But the wild part about all this is that Diddy's son, Justin, was also at these parties. Hold on, where my son at? The life can do with the good hair. <laughs> That's just... <laughs> This one of them. This one Shouts out to Lil Diddy one or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouts out. Shouts out to Diddy's sons who look nothing like him. It's still in question. <laughs> we don't really know what's going on. Oh, come on, man. Come on, dude. Justin was very young in these videos, and from the looks of it, it doesn't seem like he was of legal age yet. But somehow Diddy thought it was okay to have him in a party. Not really surprising at all. If those allegations are looking true, in my opinion. And I think, personally, he going to disappear because if he don't, he's going to expose everybody that was part of it. And I don't care if you like these people or not. If they did something illegal, they need to go to jail. Point blank. But I feel like it's going to be another Esteen case with him. He going to just disappear, if you know what I mean. Something really odd started happening after the eclipse. I don't know why that's happening right now. I'm using a welding mask. What is happening right now? I'm putting my phone on the welding mask. So I don't know what, if it's like electromagnetic energy coming at us right now, being pulsed. That is so weird. I am so confused. And it all started with this mysterious black shadow that was seen crossing the sky in Mexico, West United States, and East United States. It was seen in many different parts in the same date in the same time what did my husband catch while zoomed in so a lot of people are saying that this mysterious black shadow is just a shadow of a plane a satellite or something like that but i guess this is not what's going on here this might actually be something else entirely this video for instance was recorded in new jersey and uploaded recently Yo no sé qué fue lo que cayó, si fue un monciega, lo que yo sé que cayó algo del cielo. Fíjense bien el video. Wow, digo, como, como no sé, y se desapareció. The best footage taken of this anomaly was actually captured in Texas, and I've shown you guys this one before, but I guess this is a very clear one, and whatever this thing is, you can see it's projected into the clouds. A shadow person, an invisible drone, an alien-like craft, whatever this thing is, no one knows but it gets weirder. A few days later, an anomaly shows up on satellite data. An anomaly as big as a country with 80 foot waves being projected from this anomaly. The same way it appears, the same way it disappears out of nowhere. An official note was released saying that this is just a glitch in the satellite data, but I've never seen anything like this before. What kind of anomaly would project this into the satellite data? Strange, right? Then, this cloud, this anomaly in the sky shows up in China. Very similar to the anomaly that's seen in the satellite data, isn't it? I mean, what's going on here? Then, a couple of days later, in Peru, this starts happening with the ocean water in Chiang Kai Beach. Up until now, authorities and experts have no idea why the water is boiling in Chiang Kai Beach. I mean, this isn't normal. But is it correlated or is there any connection with these recent events after the eclipse? I don't know. You tell me, what do you think is really going on? I'm not sure about most of the things that we just saw. The cloud is uh, called a lenticular cloud. It's usually up in the mountains. I know about that. As far as the water boiling on the beach, I have no idea. But the thing that fascinated me the most was the black shadow that was going through the clouds. I don't know what that could possibly be. They say it was an airplane, but there's no way an airplane goes that direction on a screen anyway. I don't know what that could be. You guys let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. Because people would think I'm lying or I'm delusional. To this day, it's, it's, I'm very careful about who I talk to about the story, but this is a fact. This is something that happened to me.
This experience happened to me about, uh, it was early 80s uh, in Los Angeles, California. I was an actor, uh, a struggling actor, just trying to figure out how to make a, a career, a real go of it. People who know me know that I stop by my mom's house, you know, a couple times a week to go see my mom. Everybody who knows me knows that about me. So one day I actually give her a call. She doesn't answer the phone. So I said, I can leave now. So I'm in Monica driving to 